I found him. Episode 60, Season 1. We are back on Fog Entertainment to review The Last of Us. This one is called Ken. Because I guess it's about family. It's about Joel getting reunited with his brother, Tommy. Joel and Tommy. Tommy and Joel. You know, they sound like a good combination. They sound as if they'd make a good duo. But in all honesty, I mean, across the, the game and the TV series... Very, 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 very little happens with Joel and Tommy. Jo Tommy played such a small part in the in the in the opener of both the TV series and the game, and then like twenty years later, you get a time skip, and he's like this non-existent, long-lost brother. It's yeah, I think, the, the, I mean, if we're going to dedicate an episode to Frank and Bill, can Tommy not get some of that love? Yeah, could we not have seen some flashbacks? We've heard a lot of talk about the things that Joel and Tommy have done in this world. Can't we see some of it? Couldn't they show us some of the things exactly. that Joel, Tommy and Tess all done? But no, we never get that. Like if a tree falls in the woods but no one's around to hear it, did it really fall? Yeah, that's, I mean, I think we could have seen some good flashbacks. But we haven't had that. Anyway, speaking of flashbacks, we see... We got a flash forward. Well, we got a flash forward. We see Henry and Sam um, dying again, essentially. And then it's three months later. And uh, we are three months after the death of the two brothers. I'm loving the snow. I like the snow. I feel like it... It's done really well here on Marlon and Big Florence's cabin. Yeah, so we're introduced to we're introduced to a new character, Marlon. He's a Native American man, and since he's Native American, I believe that means that a he's allowed to stay. He's allowed to marry into the same race, and b he's allowed to be straight. Because let's be honest, you don't get very many gay Native American men that that marry um, black women, so... Yeah. No, you definitely If don't. he was gay. No, I mean, like... What, black men. Like, I mean, how unrealistic would it have been if Marlon, right, this Native American man, walks into his cabin, rabbits over the back, and there's some big black guy in the kitchen called Duke, you know what I mean, preparing the dinner? Two things, right? It would, it would have been fucking shit. But no, at, at least Marlon was allowed to have a fellow Native American wife. So Marlon and Florence. You know what? I kind of enjoyed the characters. There was some witty banter. But a lot of people are saying this is the best part of the entire series. And I'm, I'm just not seeing it. I'm not buying it, right? But Marlon, played by a guy that was in Die Hard 3. So automatically it's a bit over. I believe he was also in the Green Mile. Yes, he was. I think he was the first but, person to die in the Green Mile. But see Florence, right? How is she that size in Apocalypse? He's not bringing back big rabbits. He's bringing back wee rabbits. Yeah, if people are going to bury Kathleen, if people are going to make fun of Kathleen for her size, then it's only fair to make fun of Florence. Who's How's fucking that fat. supporting her, man? We're yeah. back and forth. So, what? Let's get on, Florence! Joel's holding them at gunpoint. Joel tells Marlon that he wants to know where his brother is and he better point to the same place as Florence. Uh, Marlon then tells, asks Florence, did you tell them the truth? And she's like, yep. And he's like, well, are you telling me the truth? And she's like, yep. So again, that was funny. He points to the same place. He wants to know where his brother is. He wants to go west, but they advise him not to. They talk about how he'd have to pass the river of death and that that's not a good idea because anything on the other side of the river of death is basically a place you don't want to go. But Joel's, like, the name. Joel's like, you won't scare me. Ellie says the couple's about a thousand years old. And I mean, that's pretty much it. Joel takes off. He gets outside. He has a brief panic attack. I don't understand why Joel is taking so many panic attacks. Yeah. Are these panic attacks or is it like a heart issue? Because you're almost led to believe it's kind of a heart issue. I mean, I, I get he's 50 odds, but in the game he was never seen as frail. Yeah. He was, and, he was just never seen as frail. Like He's not even like strong at one point in this fucking show. Wait, but the game kind of almost, like, portrays him. Fuck the game portrays Marlon in better condition. Uh, well, that's the thing. If, I mean, if Marlon and Joel go one-on-one -on -one here, I'm not convinced Marlon doesn't beat him. 
Anyway, then um, Joel and Ellie continue on. Ellie steals one of the rabbits. They they have a campfire. Joel talk they talk about what they're going to do after you know this is all back to normal or if it ever if they finish their mission or whatever. And Joel can go and lead a life. Joel says he'd have to he'd like to get a farmhouse and have a ranch, and he would like to raise sheep. So it's going to be Joel and a bunch of sheep. Bit weird. But each to your own. Kind of just sums Joel up though. I think in this show he seems very depressing. Therefore he'd be alone. He on says, his wee ranch with his wee sheep. But he says sheep are quiet. And, and they do what you tell them. And he kind of looks at Ellie as a hint to say. Shut the fuck up. Yeah I wish you were a fucking sheep. Um, Ellie then talks about how she wants to be an astronaut. And her favourite astronaut is Sally Ride. Uh, I mean she says this is the greatest name for an astronaut ever. I think Buzz Aldrin's better. I think Buzz Aldrin's better. Neil Armstrong's like the, the over guy, but Buzz Aldrin just has a fucking... Buzz, name. Buzz, Buzz, light here to the rescue. Sally Ride, I mean, I guess Ride. I'm riding in... Sally's riding into space, but, I mean... Buzz Aldrin. Buzz, Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin's... Buzz Aldrin. I said it, Buzz Aldrin. Um, That's jo right, isn't that? Joel awakens in the morning. He was supposed to keep watch, first watch and second watch, but he fell asleep. Ellie's keeping watch. Joel's annoyed, tells Ellie, if this happens again, wake me up. Um, they then, like, pass the river of death, and uh, I thought it was strange because this place was made out to be a no-go zone, and there was just nothing there, apart from an actual river. And I, I feel like there's just a lack of anything happening in this show. I'm not saying it's crap, but there, there's a lack of infected. There's a, like, a lack of bandits. There's a lack... There's just, like... There's a lack of anything happening. There's a lack of danger. But see, is that because the game is just filled it? Because it has to be because it's a game? Or could the show have met it halfway? I think, I get it, the show... There's no in fact in this episode. Look, a show can't be the same as the game, I get that. You know what I mean? You can't have, like, oh, tens and thousands of infected. But I, I think the show is way too... Uh, there's, la there's a lack of anything in the show. Like, could we not even have got Marlon, like, killing those rabbits? Like, shooting them? That would have been a bit of action. In the game it kicks off with her, Ellie shooting a rabbit in winter. Yeah, I, I just... That would have been a nice wee... I just, I just think a lot of the times it's Joel and Ellie, uh, Ellie and Joel walking about and there's not a lot happening. Anyway, they get confronted by this group. Um, the Jackson no, group. The Jackson Five, even though there's more like 15 of them. The leader, they've got a dog and says if you're infected, this dog's going to chew you to pieces. The dog looks at Joel and doesn't do anything. Then the dog looks at Ellie and starts barking. Joel thinks the dog's going to start chewing Ellie because she's attack. infected. He has another attack, but then he looks around and Joel, uh, Ellie and the dog are playing. So Joel then talks about his brother, how he's looking for his brother. Then some black woman asks for uh, the name of his brother. She turns out she's the leader of the group, of course. And um, he says his name is Joel. So then she ends up taking Joel and Ellie to Jackson. Joel arrives in Jackson, where he's reunited with Tommy. So Tommy and Joel have this embrace, they hug. Um, they then sit down with Tommy and Maria. Uh, Maria's like kind of welcoming them to Jackson, says that they can stay here. Maria and Tommy talk about the Jackson place and how things work. Joel then asks... Maria, if he can have some family time with his brother, and then Tommy's like, well, actually, Joe, and he, Tommy points at the fact that him and Maria got married. Brilliant. Love this. Didn't really love this. Uh, again, more forced agenda down our throat. And I don't know, I just feel like this, it just completely undermined the whole reunion scene they got. And especially the bit after this, but... Yeah, I wasn't a fan of this, and then Joel's kind of just sitting there awkwardly, and then he has to congratulate Yeah, them. Ellie's like, well, congratulate them, and Joel's like, uh, yeah, sure, whatever, congratulations. No, but, uh, but see the way Joel's like, oh, well, uh, can we family talk? Well, even, if, even if he is married or, or is married, well, why can't he just have a minute with his brother? Joel's never met this person, so for me, it doesn't matter if Tommy and Maria are married, not married, just met, or, or known each other for a hundred years, at the end of the day, uh, uh, Joel doesn't know Maria, so... Exactly. Maria's not Joel's family. She can be married to Tommy, but Maria means absolutely nothing to Joel. I know. 
But what Tommy just says that, and he's expecting Joel to commit whatever he was going to say, the properly yeah. heart to heart. And of course, um, Some, somebody doesn't know. Of of course, Tommy is portraying a white character, so therefore, and um, like you know, he's not Native American, therefore, he, he's lucky that he doesn't have to be gay. But he he doesn't get the opportunity. Well, I'm sure, he takes her up the ass from Maria, but, so. but he doesn't get the opportunity to marry uh, someone that's the same race. So yeah, he get his wife gets race swapped, and why? Like literally, why? Why did Joel's daughter and wife get race swapped? Why is Tommy's wife getting race swapped? Why are you not allowed to be white? But everyone in the game who's black can remain black. I just don't get this. I mean, why, honestly, man, or, why don't the showrunners just come out and say, look, all white people are are evil or something like that? You know, like, it's a crime to be white. Can they at least tell us, like, why we're not allowed to see white people? Unless you're a bad person in this show, you're, you're pretty much not allowed to be white. So, that's... Imagine that's... the uproar, though, if Sam and Henry were white. Yeah. Oh, ho So... What are you doing there? Marlene's Chinese. Whoa-ho! Marlene's called Hawking Paul. Uh, Tom and Maria take them on a tour again. I, I just feel like Maria was overstaying her welcome here. Yeah, it's like just fuck off, Maria. And Joe, and you can just see like in Pedro Pascal's face. He was like, "Would you piss off?" Yeah. Um, then, then finally, she takes Ellie away, and Tom and Joe get a bit of brother time. Um, Joe's on about how he came here to help Tommy. And Tommy stopped uh, communicating. Tommy basically says that he kind of gave that life up, and that he um, came and made something with with Maria here in Jacksonville. And it was, I mean, it's almost like, well, Tommy, ungrateful bastard. It's almost like he just totally forgot he had a brother. I know, and it, it, even if right, even if that is his logic, he's like not even appreciative of the fact that he's travelled all this way, the rest of his life. Exactly. He's like, I will fuck you. I, I, I stopped wanting contact, so I don't care if you travelled 900 miles. Well, I mean, America's massive, like, so it's probably thousands of miles. But anyway, man, I, again, like I said, I, I undermined it, the whole reunion. Yeah. I didn't like this. So uh, Tommy asks how um, jo how Tess is doing. Joe lies and says that Tess is fine and that he's taking Ellie across the country and that he needs to find the fireflies and he was hoping that Tommy could help with the fireflies. Tommy explains that they have a base in Boulder at the University of East there in Colorado, that is about a week away on horseback, but he says that uh, to get there you would likely have to encounter raiders and infect. The Joel then tries to get Tommy to join them, but Tommy turns him down saying that he's not about that anymore and he reveals that Maria is pregnant and that he has decided to change his ways. Even the way he went about this, so he just like stops Joel in mid-sentence, says it, and he's like, oh, well, she's pregnant, so I'm not doing anything with you anymore, buddy. Yeah, um, Tommy then asks Joel if he thinks he'll make a good father, and, and Joel kind of just tells Tommy, um, we'll have to wait and see. This pisses Tommy off, and he, he, like, he, he's not, he's annoyed that Joel wouldn't just come out and say that he's going to be a good father. He says that just because life stopped for Joel doesn't mean it stopped for him. Joel then storms out. And heads into town square, and he has like another panic attack, and then he sees someone who looks briefly like his daughter. His daughter in the TV series, by the way, because she was black and had like an afro. I actually, I didn't, I actually didn't like this scene. Yeah, it was, it was all right. Good, so good acting by Big Pedro. Um, yeah, but then Tommy though, nah. In the bin, son. Yeah, but then um, Ellie gets taken to Maria and Tommy's house. Maria cuts her hair. Um, there's some decent dialogue here. Um, Ellie sees this, like, uh, memorial on the fireplace uh, saying, like, rest in peace and the dates to Kevin and Sarah. Ellie then apologises for the death of her children. M Maria says, uh, only Kevin was mine. Sarah was Joel's, which Ellie didn't know about. So uh, Maria's like, oh, it uh, wasn't really my place to say, as Ellie didn't realise, and Ellie's like, nah, nah, don't worry about it. Uh, then Maria starts to, like, warn Ellie about Joel, and basically try and, she tries to paint Joel as, like, a bad guy, <laughs> and kind of says that she shouldn't be with him and all this stuff, and it's like, well, first of all, Maria, you, you don't know shit, so, like... <laughs> like, does she not, like, think that this is a bit of a weird um, couple anyway? It's a bit of a weird choice seeing a 14-year-old girl, like, run the boot with a, you know, a, like, a near 60-year-old guy. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. I highly doubt these two have just decided, you know, Ellie and Joel just decided, you know what, me and you is going to go across the country and, you know, <laughs> be a two-man band. There's obviously fucking more to it, like, there's obviously a reason why Ellie's with Joel, but Maria's basically just painting Joel as a bad person here, and she He's says... White. That, fuck him. Be careful who you put your faith in and that she doesn't think Ellie should be with Joel. So, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of Maria up until this point, but at this stage it was like, well, fuck her. Yep, the battle lines have been drawn. Maria is in the bin. Do not like Maria. Yeah, um, Ellie then goes and attends movie night, whereas Tommy sneaks up on Joel while Joel's trying to f fix his boots. Tommy's brought Joel a new pair of boots and he wants to apologise. Uh, Joel then reveals that Ellie's immune and he tells Tommy about their journey, how they, they got here. He brings up uh, Tess's death and he talks about the offence in Kansas City. I'm too old, man. Joel then goes on too to, weak. to explain that he thinks he's getting too old and he fears that he can't keep Ellie safe and he's going to get her killed. He says that he needs Tommy's help. He says that, look, this is a, if, if Tommy really, you know, doesn't like the life that they used to live, then this is a chance for Tommy to make things right and that he can help get Ellie to where she needs to be and get a cure and then maybe his son or daughter can get born into a world where, you know, all this stuff doesn't really exist because there'll be a cure and maybe life can begin to go back to normal and get a bit of normality. Uh, to this, Tommy agrees. And at the same time, I'm thinking, why don't you just both go? Yeah, it's like Joel like, paints this vivid picture of, oh, if you go, everything's going to be all right. I can't do it. Is there a reason why it's like a two-man person here? Is there a reason why... Tommy and Joel couldn't go, or Tommy couldn't get a boy, a big bunch of his fucking friends from uh, Jacksonville, and they could go as a group. Is there is there yeah, a reason? But it's also the fact Joel's travelled all this way to reunite with his brother, but then within like a night, he's willing to let his brother leave him with Ellie because he's too old. Why why can't it just be a case of Joel's like I'm too old, Tommy? I need you with I, us. I, I need you. I need the backup. We need we're a team, damn it. We need this. But yeah, it's like, if, if, if Tommy goes, then what's Joel going to do? Going to head back to... Is he going to raise another black kid? <laughs> um, Joel then returns to the house um, where he sees, like, Ellie reading diaries and stuff like this. Uh, Ellie's, like, wondering, is this all that girls had to worry about back then? She then confronts him, accusing him of um, trying to be too protective and that she's, he's trying to, like, pass her off onto... Tommy, Joel's like, Tommy knows the area better than me, he can keep you safe, Ellie just like, ah, fuck that. Then she brings up Sarah, and then, like, they reenact one of the, probably the most, one, one of the most important parts of the game, and I just don't think the TV series done it justice. No, it, it did just, I feel like in the game it was better than here, it just felt like your generic, sort of, Oh, don't you mention her name sort of thing. I mean, it wasn't bad, but see when you... It's like... I feel like every scene you're going to compare with the game. And if you're comparing this scene to the game, it was pretty crap. Now, if the game didn't exist, you'd probably look at this and go, oh, that was a pretty good scene. But I'm comparing it to the game scene. And it just, it just wasn't that good. Um, Ellie tells Joel that she he she's lost people too. Joel then snaps that she has no idea what loss is. Ellie explains that everyone and everything she's cared about has either died or left or everyone except Joel. And that she would be worse off without him and more scared. Then Joel just uh, reiterates that she's right, that she's not his daughter, he is not her father. And that's it. Basically, they're going their separate ways in the morning. And um, he leaves... He, he leaves the room, basically. In the game, I thought it was done a hell of a lot better, but they changed up in the TV series. The next day, Tommy arrives at the house to collect Deli. Ellie just walks out. They get to the stables, and Joel's already there. Joel... You have a choice, Ellie. Telltale. Yeah. X or B. Who are you going with, brother? <laughs> Joel basically said he was coming to steal a horse, but then he's been looking at the horse for like half an hour. Marcus Alvarez style here. Weird stuff. Um, Weird fucking horse fetish. Joel then says to Ellie, he still thinks that she would be better off with Tommy, but she decide, but she deserves, uh, you know, to pick who she goes with. Then she just throws her bag at Joel and says, right, let's get going. What was the point of Tommy even fucking coming down here with his rifle? Exactly nothing. Then, like, why doesn't no? Like, I just don't know why Tommy doesn't go. I'll come with you. Or take it to the group. 
I mean, fuck, if you're going to paint Marie in a better light, she's the leader, why not say to your wife, here, this girl here could be the fucking cure. We could save the world. Is this not a mission we can, like, risk people on? Rather than, ah, Joel, you take the horse, Sam, here for the crack, son. Right, see, in the game, right, Ellie, when Ellie, they do it differently, so Ellie kind of runs off, and then when Joel and Tommy, like, catch up where they have that, oh, you're not my daughter, you know, debate, argument scene, and then bandits arrive, like, couldn't they have done something similar to that, where maybe Tommy was going to go with them, but he got shot? Or maybe Maria gets shot? And Tommy's like, I can't leave. Could we not have had something here? A wee bit of, of action? Like, yeah, I know. It's just very weak, in my opinion. It's just like, they reunite. They I want to know, though. Is there, is there a reason why why can't Tommy go with them? Is it easier if two people do it? Uh, like, get less people? Easier to sneak there? Like, why can't Tommy go with them? Why did it have to be Tommy or Joel? I, I just don't understand. Like, that's why I just don't really get it. Yeah, like we see, he's like literally at the end of the episode. I mean, it's two on four. I mean, yeah. if they turn that into Tommy, three on four, your odds drastically go up. So then, then Joel and Ellie, they leave, they start making their way there, they get there like almost a week. Joel starts teaching Ellie how to shoot. Yeah, seems like a waste of bullets to me, but. Yeah, extremely waste of bullets. Although, to who me. knows how many bullets they took, I don't know. Maybe Tommy gave him a big bag full. Maybe to, I'm a shite brother, Joe, but here's a bag of bullets. I know, but realistically, how much did he give them? I doubt it was over 50. Um, Ellie's claiming the gun's not working properly, but then Joel shows that he might be about 160 years old, but he takes the gun and, and gets a great He's shot. It's like the end. All he needs to do is put his yeah. camouflage fucking um, on him, be alright? They, they then get to the university camp, they go inside, but the fireflies aren't there, they've already taken it off, the fireflies are gone. So it just feels, it always feels like Joel and Ellie are chasing their tails. It's like every time you think they've got a lead or they're, they're almost there, something happens. They hear noises, they go into a room, there's monkeys. And then they hear more noises outside and it turns out like there's this group. So uh, it's a group of white men, so obviously it's a, it's a group of bad people. <laughs> that's how you... It's um, okay, okay, okay. You know, that's how you... What are we doing in Boulder? That's how you determine if someone's bad in this. So Joel and Ellie try to sneak out. They get to the horse. Ellie tells Joel to watch out. Some guy sneaks up on Joel. They get into a bit of a brawl. Joel locks him in a sleeper hold. I think he kind of snaps his neck. Uh, and then throws him to the floor. Then Joel looks down. He's got a knife hanging out of him. He's being stabbed. Then the other three men start running towards him. But Joel and Ellie manage to jump on top of the horse and ride out of there. Uh, then moments later, like Ellie looks behind him and is like, ah, I think we've lost the radars. But Joel is falls off the horse, unconscious. He's like bleeding out. Ellie has to like kind of put pressure on the the wound and just telling Joel to wake up frantically as um, the the show comes to an end. So the show ends with Joel laying there, weak, old, bleeding. unconscious. You know, um, again, the, the episode was good. I thought, but there there was just a lacky a lacky action. Nothing ha there were, no, up until the very end. There was no threat of danger or nothing. I, another episode with no infected, and I don't want it to be like The Walking Dead, where they literally have infected just to be there for the sake of it, and the humans do stupid shit in order to put themselves, you know, in danger. I'm not saying it should be like that, but I, I do think there should be. There should be something more in the show. I think we need a little bit more infected. Or and there's no excuse because the episode's like an hour long. Some cases 80 minutes long. Why, why can't we see more action? Yep. Look at the budget they're getting, man. There's no excuse. Even like, originally when the, the Jacksonville group first found Ellie and Joel, why didn't they make it like the, there was like Ellie and Joel were maybe surrounded by infected? Then they arrive on horse and... And then it makes help. more sense about the whole infected thing. Oh, are, are, you, infected? are you infected? Are you bit? I mean, this was supposed to be the river of death. Oh, you can't go that way. The river of death. You see a body. Didn't see any bad guy. Didn't you see any bad guys till they were fucking a week, you know, next to the unit. You know, so until they already went on their next journey, until they went to Boulder. That's when they. So like the only people that Joel and Ellie encountered in the so-called like river of death. That oh, don't go west. You'll die if you go west. And the only thing west was the Jackson film group. There was no infected. There was no bad people. No bandits. No nothing. I'm going to give it a 7. I mean, not even... 
the river of death. Now, I thought they might have had a scene where maybe Ellie falls in the river and she can't swim. Nice, uh, but they got we got nothing. Then if, she, then if she falls in, she fucking if you fall in water that cold, you have to get your clothes and all off. You know that'd be an awkward fucking scene, wouldn't it? Well, that's true. I, I just felt like there was a lack of action. I think more could have happened. I felt like it was a good episode without being great. Uh, so, I yeah. feel like they didn't utilize Tommy. They made Joel look very weak, and there was a lot of woke in there. So I'm giving it a seven. It was an hour long, and not a lot happened. Yeah, literally. Well, I'm going to give it an 8, since you gave it a 7. 7.5 out of 10. That's our rating, guys. Let us know what you think down below. And, uh, yeah, just three episodes left. So, Season 1 is literally flew in. I don't think they're doing the game justice. I mean, I don't think it's a bad show, but the thing is, I think the game's a masterpiece, so it's never really going to live up to the game. And if, I feel like every big scene or every big change that they have from the game is for the worse. I don't think any. I don't. I haven't looked at the show and thought, "Wow, they did that better in the show than they did in the game." I feel like every big decision or every big factor or every big scene, they they, they don't do it justice. So, yeah, seven point five out of ten, guys. Next week, Left Behind probably feature a lot of DLC stuff. So we'll see. Anyway, that's it. Till then, till next time. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.